Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to talk to Gavio, and we've uh, we've done a, an interview and a tour of his amazing safari van, and now he's going to explain to us how he installed his own pop top. And if, if you've done any research on these, you go to a place, you say put a pop top on, you're talking $10,000. So Gavio, how much has this cost you so far? Um, all in with the fabric and finishing and all that, probably eight or nine hundred dollars. Eight or nine hundred. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a little cheaper than ten thousand. It's a lot cheaper. I couldn't afford a top pop top otherwise. I mean, that's really what it came down to. And I thought about just going with a high top, and and but that didn't satisfy my dream of having a pop top. So I was like, okay, I'll figure out how to do a pop top. So you're gonna walk us through how you did it, mm -hmm. and I know it. You know. If someone has a different rig, if they have an E350 or a Chevy Savannah or, or whatever they have, uh, it's going to be different. But if you can give us the broad strokes so that someone can see what you did and possibly replicate it. Okay. Well, let's take a shot at it. So the big thing uh, is really what you start out with on your top. So this top is a, um, it was just a, a regular conversion van high top that I found on an Astro van at uh, Pick and Pull, uh, which in California, that's our local self-service um, salvage yards. And uh, it's, uh, I think it's an eight inch top. Um, I'm not sure the measurements don't come out quite right, but call it an eight inch top. And um, So you probably at least consider just sticking it on, but you wouldn't be able to stand upright. Uh, basically that was my fallback plan. I figured if I messed things up bad enough in the process of doing this, that's what I would resort to. I would bolt it on the way it was originally designed and at least I would have that. Right. So that took some of the e, some of the edge off of cutting that big hole in the roof. Right. Um, and you know, for the price, I mean, I imagine this varies depending on where you are, but in California, pick and pull, a roof is 90 bucks. So uh, I can't beat it. You, you don't have much to lose. Yeah, exactly. And it took about, um, I went down there with a buddy and it took about four hours probably to pull it off and another to another hour to, you know, kind of get it out and load it up and get on the road. So it wasn't too difficult. Um, okay, so then once I had the top, then I went over to my buddy's driveway where I was working and turned it over on a couple of sawhorses and started figuring out what I actually had. So it turns out these tops are very stout um, because they're designed to actually become part of the structure of the van they're installed on. And uh, so I felt really good about, you know, being able to do stuff with it and not have it be um, weak or flopping around or whatever. It's very strong. It has a lot of reinforcement in it. Um, so then I had to figure out how I was going to make it work. And originally I had come up with a scheme where I was going to make the top go straight up and down because I really like that style of pop top a lot. Um, but my buddy whose place I was working at, um, uh, uh, they were way into Volkswagen Westies and I just got to looking at the hinges on those and I thought, I can make that work. So I bought a set of hinges from a uh, Vanagon Westphalia and um, then just started fiddling with it and figuring out exactly what the angles needed to be and whatever. Like the most important thing was getting it so that the hinges scissor up and down in, um, in a perfectly perpendicular fashion, right? Like they both need to be parallel to each other, otherwise they'll bend um, and then they'll start to bind. So anyway, the angles on the bottom where they mount to the roof almost perfectly match the angle of the roof on the Astro van. So I was really lucky there. I had to build some boxes inside on the roof in order to get the angle right where they bolt to the roof. And uh, once I had that set, um, you know, honestly, the rest was gravy. So uh, once I had felt like that was ready to go, then the next step was to um, cut the hole in the roof. And uh, the day that I did that, I knew my life had changed inside my van. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I stood there and I looked down, like I'd already built a lot of the camper in it. And I looked down at what I had been looking across at. And I was like, oh yeah, this is, this is going to be the life. So, so I knew I was on the right track and I uh, was pretty determined to pull it off. So I used um, some fairly beefy aluminum angle and made kind of a double sandwich and I reinforced the hole all the way around what I had cut. 
Um, so you were concerned about the structural integrity of the roof. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm my first. I, I'm I'm an engineer as well as a designer and an artist, and so. Um, so I just kind of have that in my brain, like just always looking for problems that could possibly happen and solving them before they happen. So um, I don't think that it was nearly as much of an issue as called for the amount that I reinforced it, but I did it anyway because um, I like to take it off road and I just didn't want it twisting and bending and, you know, I didn't want to get somewhere and be parked in some crazy wonky campsite and find out suddenly that my slider door doesn't open. So, um, yeah, so I reinforced it uh pretty well then basically uh the other the other issue that had to be worked out was uh was the clamp bar and how you clamp it down and make it stay down when um when it's in the down position and i think once we climb inside that'll be a little easier to see so i won't talk about it right in the moment but once i had all that done i had my friends help me hoist it up there and um and I uh, bolted it to the roof. I reinforced the inside with steel channel that is connected to the roof cross members. And so it gave me a really nice strong surface to bolt through for those hinges. Because um, the top is fairly hefty. It weighs, um, um, we guessed that it's probably 100 pounds. So, uh, so you want it attached on there really well. And um, yeah, once it was up there, then it was just all details, and that was quite a bit, actually. I had to figure out a weather strip that would seal it so I wouldn't get a lot of water coming in underneath it. Now, the way a pop top is, you've got your canvas, which actually is, uh, is the main thing that keeps water out of your interior. So, uh, like a little bit of leakage under the edge wouldn't be necessarily that big a deal. But you also have issues with, um, if you have a lot of air leakage there, you'll get a lot of wind noise and... Um, and plus, if you do have water coming in there, then it can start to mold or whatever, like if it sits up there. So that felt important to me. And um, so I contacted um, Steel Rubber Products and, um, and I got like a dozen samples of weather strip that I thought might work and fiddled around with them until I found one that I liked and, um, you know, and ordered 30 feet of that and glued that on and... Yeah, then uh, one of the things that I ended up fiddling with a lot was the struts, which hold the top up. So I think it's probably time for us to go inside and have All a look around. Okay, so obviously one huge issue with a pop top is that you need to be capable of lifting it and lowering it. Um, yeah, otherwise if it's 100 it's pounds, extremely a... self-defeating. Yeah. yeah, it is not something you can lift on your own. Um, so... So the struts, the lift struts actually became a huge issue. So I started with one pair that I thought was gonna work for me okay. And I tried them in probably a dozen different locations, like trying to get the balance right. And lift struts, I'll tell you, if you go with lift struts, um, it, it, the math on it is so convoluted. Like there is no simple way to figure out exactly what you need. Um, because the amount of pressure that they put depends on how contracted they are and then that depends on the angle so how much it's actually lifting is dependent on the angle which is also dependent on how far it's retracted it's crazy so rather than doing the math after I fiddled with those first ones and tried them in a bunch of different positions I ended up just getting on the horn with a uh, with a place down in uh, Southern California that basically just sells lift struts um, and uh, and the guy there helped me uh, find like three good candidates and he just sent them to me and said, um, here, just send back the ones you don't use. And uh, so I finally got ones that work perfectly. And um, so basically it takes, it takes a, f a fair grunt to get it moving, which is great because you want the weight of the top to hold itself down so your clamps don't have to work too hard. Um, and then once it's lifted about that far, it'll lift itself the rest of the way up. Um, but you can still pull it down with a reasonable amount of force, which is, um, which is the perfect balance. And it varies a little bit depending on how hot it is out. Um, when it's hot out, it's easier to put up, harder to pull down. When it's cold out, it's the reverse. Um, so, so anyway, that, that took an enormous amount of fiddling to get that right. Um, then there's the clamp bar. 
Uh, so basically what I did is I took um, this piece of uh, one inch uh, steel tubing and um, I mounted it into the corners of the, of the original fiberglass high top and um, I used some wood blocking to make that strong and fiberglassed all that in. And so when that uh, comes down, there's a piece of structure I put across the front where the clamps actually mount. So when the top comes down, it clamps against this and that makes it really strong, but it doesn't squeeze the weather strip on the outside too much. Like it's actually supported on a base here that's solid um, rather than dependent on, on squishing the weather strip. So then the other component to making this really secure is that at this point, you've got the top on hinges in the back and you've got these struts here. So it goes up and it goes down. Um, but there's not much keeping it from moving back and forth up here. Like the hinges don't provide enough torsional stability. So that's where this baby comes in. Um, so basically what I made is a, um, I used another piece of uh, one inch steel tubing for the main thing. And then I made a track down here that, um, uh, that this slides back and forth on. And then this pivot here keeps it anchored in place. So now the top has no movement side to side. So, and I've had it in winds that have gusted up to like 40 miles an hour and it, it, it doesn't move at all. The whole van shakes, but, um, but the top doesn't move. And that was another concern that I had was what if it gets in a strong lateral wind, is the top just gonna torque over, bend the hinges, and you know, then 100 pounds of top goes and flops off the side of my van, uh, which would be awkward and inconvenient <laughs> to say the least. Yes, because <laughs> so, you know what torrential rain's following it. it. Exactly, and then what do you do, right? Like you can't drive it home like that, so <laughs> yeah. Anyway, definitely didn't want that to be in my future, so. Um, yeah, so this has proven to actually work quite well and I'm pretty happy with it. I put a fair amount of effort into the tent. Um, first, you I put a fair amount of effort into this whole thing. Okay, fair There was lots yes. of fiddling and <laughs> thinking and then I actually put a whole lot of doing up till now, just fiddling and thinking. There was a lot of fiddling and thinking and, um, and yeah, a fair amount of doing. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so, um, so I wanted, uh, as is sort of typical of me, I wanted everything. So I wanted open screens, I wanted um, uh, closed windows, and then I wanted, you know, insulated curtains. So, um, so first there's how do you attach the canvas, right? So while I was working with just the fiberglass top by itself and just laying on saw horses, I put in um, wood, I'm on the wrong side here because you're looking this direction. I put in wood strips all the way around and fiberglass those in so that they would become a stapler for me to be able to staple the canvas to. And then I put in a wood strip all around the bottom too, uh, attached to that aluminum angle that I used to reinforce the opening. And that goes all the way around the front and I kind of cut that shape up there to be just the way I wanted it. And um, so that gave me staplers for the top and the bottom. And so then I cut up an old painting tarp and um, I made patterns uh, just by stapling it up and trimming it and, you know, just getting it to where I had it the way I wanted. And I fiddled around where the, where the windows would be good and all that. And... Um, then I borrowed a friend's sewing machine and got to work. So I used um, 10, I think I used 10 yards of canvas. Um, I used something called um, Marine Duck. And um, part of the reason I picked that over some of the sort of more high-tech fabrics that you can get, uh, honestly, was color. I didn't like the color of any of the high-tech fabrics. So I went with this instead. Um, I also liked it because um, I felt like it would probably have less odor than the, than the high-tech um, poly-type fabrics. So then I also, um, I lined it. Uh, so this is actually a separate, let's see, where can I show you that? You can kind of see here. So this is actually a separate 
there's a separate canvas mm -hmm. on the inside. There's two layers of fabric. Yeah, and then that is lined with a layer of sort of a fleece insulation um, that I found from somebody. It's so there's thin. actually three layers of fabric. Yeah, exactly. And um, I'm undecided how much difference that really makes in terms of the temperature and stuff in here, but I like the way the top itself feels. It just seems to have more substance than just one layer of canvas. So uh, I think it was probably worth it. Um, we'll get to why it may not have been here in a minute. Um, so anyway, so then I, um, I bought um, all kinds of supplies and stuff from a place that sells uh, sewing materials for marine applications. So first there's, um, there's the screens and uh, that's permanently attached. And then um, when I made the plastic, um, and then I just made it Velcro across the top. That was really the easiest way to seal that up. And then, uh, then there's the curtains. So this is also, this is a sandwich kind of like the top itself is. So it's got the canvas on the outside and then the separate, it's a thinner canvas that I used on the inside and then the fleece insulation in between. And so that seals up like that. Nice. So anyway, uh, then um, kind of making the whole top, basically I ended up making it so that it was, um, it was all, it was basically the whole top is all one piece. Like even though, you know, there's all the layers and the insulation and the windows and whatever, all that got sewn together at once and it's actually joined at one of the back corners. I can't remember which one. So it goes on as this big strip. And um, uh, it made a huge mound of fabric. <laughs> I couldn't believe how much fabric I put in this when it was done. I mean, it was just this big mound. I have a picture of it somewhere. But uh, anyway, so then, um, then I just had a friend uh, come and help and um, you know, I just stapled it in and I'd been really careful with my patterns and everything. So I was pretty sure it was gonna work. And with the stapling, stapling at top and bottom, it made it really easy to take little micro adjustments to it. Um, so I could get it uh, wrinkle free, which um, it was just a personal thing. Like most pop tops that I see, um, especially home builds and really anything that's had the canvas replaced so often I see wrinkles in them. And um, I don't know, it's just a personal thing that bugs me. So I wanted to be able to get it wrinkle free. I don't see a wrinkle anywhere. <laughs> I, think you've, um, I think you've accomplished it. Thanks, yeah, I've, I've been really happy with it. Again, it was, you know, I mean, I did all of this to make myself happy. And when I look at it and I'm happy, I feel like it was it was worth the work, so. So how long did, would you guess it took you from finding the uh, high top to being saying, I'm done? I worked on the bulk of the structure over a period of like two months. Um, and during that time, there was probably about a month or five weeks of it that I had a big hole in the roof of my van, which was kind of fun. Um, and then, then the canvas, gosh, I sewed on that canvas for two or three weeks. I mean, not that I was working, you know, eight hours a day or anything, but yeah, I was probably two or three weeks making that canvas and putting it in. And then after that, there was finishing all of this. Um, cause really all I had at that point, like the inside was just this bare fiberglass shell and it looked gnarly. It had all these weird structural members and whatever. I mean, it was, it was nasty. Um, so then I had to figure out what to do with all that. And I had to put a handle in here. Um, this was actually a, a piece of work, um, getting this here because up until that time, I was basically reaching in there and trying to use the clamp bar, which really there's not enough leverage. So that was a lot of work. Anyway, so I did that and I basically used insulation to fill in the shapes here so I could make something I could live with. And I also put uh, wiring in for these lights and, um, and where the uh, cables come in from my um, solar panels, uh, which is kind of behind you there, Bob, and then for the, for the fantastic fan. Um, and then used this um, uh, sort of flex form carpet type product to uh, cover the whole thing up. Um, and so all that was, oh, that was another couple of weeks. So yeah, there was a fair amount of time in it. Yeah, it took a while, <laughs> is the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, it took a while. Um, but now it's fantastic. 
but now I look at it and it makes me happy. Yes. I wake up, I, I'm able to stand up in my van. That makes me happy. I can stand up while I'm making my food and I can look out the window at the beautiful sunset and that makes me happy. So the main thing that makes this difficult is that I got really ambitious, you know, putting in the liner and stuff, which I hadn't really been planning on at first. It's just an upgrade that I thought of as I went along. And so there's this whole bunch up that happens between the clamp bar and the, and the lower surface here. And there's a lot of fabric that tries to go in there. So it takes a little bit of fussing to do that. And that's probably the main thing that I would do differently if I were to do it again, is I would move the clamp bar back so I had more room for the fabric. I'm just saying, I'm not perfect and um, definitely learning as I go here. I'm thrilled that it basically works, but that is the piece I don't like. So this is gonna be awkward. It's not gonna be pretty to watch, but that's just how it goes. <laughs> okay, so, so one of the things I have to do is I have to make the, I have to open the plastic part of the window in order to put the top down. And then, um, then I give it a good tug and it's fairly warm today. So it takes a little bit of effort. Um, on a colder day, it would be a little easier. Then I have to just take a few moments to pull in the fabric. And it's not too bad. On a good day, I can do it in maybe 20 seconds, which honestly, for the value of being able to stand up, it's worth it. My guess is every guy with a pop top has to do this though. Um, uh, yours, because you didn't leave quite enough room, might be harder. No, but not terribly. They, they, um, you know, there's a lot of them that you can get done, and I mean, literally, it's like automatic. Like, you just push right. a button and motors right. put it down, and the fabric goes where it's supposed to all by itself. And, you know, I didn't have access to what it takes to figure that out. And, um, okay. Oh, and, and then it goes down, and then the clamps here just go up and ka-chink like that. So it really, uh, going down, which I would guess is the harder of the two. Definitely. Was going, easy. Going up, you just unclamp like so. And I just give it a little push like that. And it'll do the rest. Oh, look at that. It just pops itself off. Yep. And then the one arm that goes across must lock. Have a lock? No, it just goes across and stays. Yep. Yeah, all its job is is to keep the top from moving side to side. And uh, so it serves two functions. One is it protects it in the case of wind that it can't torque over and you know bend the hinges. And the other is it keeps the clamp nubbins lined up. So when it goes down, they're always perfectly aligned over the clamping part. Uh -huh. Really easy. Pro, you know, looks like a professional made it. Thanks. And kind of you are, <laughs> even though it was your first time. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you know, figuring out how to do things is what I do for a living. So in that sense, you know, it was just another thing to figure out. So, And having the Westie there in front of you to see, that gave you the visual image you needed. Um, some of it. Yeah, I mean, most of this is not actually how a Westie works. Um, so I had to do a lot of adaptation from that. Um, but it did give me the idea that this would be the easiest way to do it. And I think that's true. I didn't have to fab, fab up nearly as much stuff as I would have uh, to get it to, you know, to go straight up and down, which had been my original plan. Um, and uh, But your hole in here is so small that going straight up and down wouldn't have given you much more. Um, no, it would have been the same. You know, like the whole top would have, you know, I would have had right. the same amount of space. It just, it just would be level instead of, you know, going mm -hmm. up at the front. But um, this works good for your solar panels. It works good, and yeah, exactly. That's one benefit. I can, um, you know, park it in a direction so that in the winter uh, my solar panels do better. And, um, you know, now that I've got it, I actually, I like the way it looks. Right. Like when it's up, I look at it and I go, well, that's nice. I like yes. that. Yeah, I do <laughs> so, too. I think so too. Um, okay. So, yeah. So then I had to do things like, you know, whatever, take care of the headliner and make space for the clamps and... Um, the overhead console came out to here, so I had to shorten that. And, you know, it was just all these little fiddly things. It just, um, uh, the, you know, they, they, they take a little bit of effort to work out. Um, and how much you need to do that really depends on, you know, your sense of aesthetics. Like for some people, you could get the bare bones up and operating. If you're not, if you're not aesthetically oriented like I am, you can get the bare bones up and operating much, much easier. Um, 
you know, because a lot of this I did because, um, you know, because of how I wanted it to look and how I wanted it to come out when I was done. So the last thing you had to do then was to figure out how to install your solar panels on it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that actually turned out to be, honestly, the easiest part. So what I did is, you know, most of these uh, conversion van tops, they have some sort of a luggage rack thing built into them. Right. And uh, you can kind of see it there where there's like a dip in the fiberglass. Right. So that was pretty handy. It had a couple of um, one inch by one inch rectangular tubes there already. So I just built a, um, a frame out of aluminum angle that was the size I needed for my solar panels, and I bolted it there to that, uh, to that, to those luggage rack bars, and then one more bolt in the front that was a through bolt through the roof. So at the two front corners is the only places that I had to add extra holes through the roof. So it just made it easy to keep it sealed that way. And um, I sealed it up the way you would on a boat with marine sealant and, um, and all of that. And uh, then underneath the solar panels, there's a piece of fiberglass that's kind of almost a vertical surface, and I use that as a hole to run my cables through. Well, Gavio, thank you so much for sharing all this. And like, like we said, you know, the details will vary for every vehicle. They have an Astro or a Chevy or a Ford or a Dodge, but the ideas are all basically sound. Yeah, I think the ideas are, are fairly similar. The, if, if I were going to say what I think you really need to take into account if you're going to try and, uh, and build your own, um, is, uh, and, and I've seen a number of people do this in a whole bunch of different ways. And if you Google it up, you'll find some different people trying things. But, um, but the main things I would say is you want to take into account your lateral stability. Don't underestimate what happens if the thing gets caught in the wind and make sure you have some kind of provision to keep it from bending or torquing over or something like that. Um, the second is, uh, be really patient with whatever you use as your hinging mechanism. If you make it go straight up and down, you'll use scissor hinges. If you use uh, hinges like these, they'll, they'll go at an angle. Um, but they, they need to go vertical, like t or parallel to each other, right? So they need to move up and down in a perpendicular plane. Otherwise, they're going to bind and they're going to give you trouble. And um, I would say to be on the safe side, reinforce your roof opening. You know, don't take chances with that. And, um, and just, you know, be prepared to fiddle with it a lot. A lot, yeah. Yeah. And also, um, think seriously, if you're going to do fabric, um, think seriously about where that fabric's going to go and how it's going to work when it goes down. Um, mine works and then I added extra fabric because I wanted to insulate it and then it became harder to work. Right, so it, you need to think that through, especially if you do it at an angle, there's a lot of fabric at the front that wants to bunch up in one place. So, um, so yeah, just think through where your fabric goes. And um, yeah, and be really patient with figuring out how your struts work if you use struts to hold it up. Um, just be prepared to fiddle with that a lot too. The math is not straightforward and you're gonna have to try some things to get it so that your pressure going up and going down is, is manageable. Well, Gavio, thank you so much uh, for all this information in the tour. Uh, folks, I think, you know, if you've got an engineer's mind and some, <laughs> you're one of those handymen guys that can take a built, uh, set of tools and do almost anything, I think this is within your reach. I think it's within your reach. I should mention, too, I don't know how to weld, so I did all of this without welding. And um, really, I have pretty basic tools. I have a drill, I have an impact driver, I have a jigsaw, um, I have an oscillating tool, and that's what I have. And, uh, and a lot of patience and willingness to just sit down and slow down and figure stuff out. Right. So. Right. so everyone, I hope you got something out of this and uh, maybe you can either be entertained by it or learn to do it yourself. If you did, uh, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks, Bob. Thank you.